Good morning, at home, drinking Pellegrino straight out the bottle. Because that's how we do. Uh, I had a request for a video involving how to get your shoulders more flexible for handstands. So we're gonna do that today. Gonna keep it simple, so we don't need to overcomplicate it. This is all stuff you can do at home. Uh, and I always try to prioritize stuff that you can do, not necessarily in a workout session, but of course you can do that. But stuff that you can do just in your day-to-day -day life, because ultimately it's the accumulation of what you do as a habit that's gonna have actually more effect on your overall flexibility than what you just do in your training session just given the amount of time that, that you do it. So first one, again, really, really simple. How often do you just pull your arms out and stretch? Just stretch overhead and reach. You know, I, I'm teaching workshops and that's usually one of the first things that I'll have people do is just see how they put their arms overhead and what it looks like. And that already gives me a lot of information for what their handstand's gonna look like. And it, it seems really simple. It seems almost so simple that you would overlook it. But get the arms up and reach. And so I can't see in the whole camera, but just get as tall as possible. Just imagine there's, you know, you're trying to reach the top of the refrigerator, you're trying to reach your top shelf. So get taller. And then you can do one arm at a time and then you can tilt the body a little bit. It's just maximal reach. I'm not trying to be strict right now, what I do with my chest, anything like that. Just getting the arms as tall as possible. I think doing something simple like that on a regular basis is gonna have a huge, huge effect. I mean, again, I'm gonna reference the cats that live in this house a few times, and they do that all the time. They, they get up and they reach. And same thing, you wanna feel this habitual need to stretch if you've been pinned down so I know like I get up in the morning or I get up from a nap and it's not even something I consciously do. It's like I feel compelled to reach and open my body because, oh, try not to hit anything, because that's part of the natural movement. So that would be tip number one is just to spend more time actively reaching your shoulders up. Try to, try to remember at least a few times a day to do that for like a minute or two, nothing crazy. And then as it becomes a habit, you're gonna be doing that more often and you'll see it's actually gonna have a huge effect on how your shoulders move. That second tip is just hang. Not even with any kind of technique, just spend more time hanging. Maybe for a few minutes a day, maybe set a timer, or just have a pull-up bar that every time you walk by, you just hang and let your shoulders stretch out. I think there's a huge benefit to this for many, many reasons, for your shoulders, for decompressing your spine. And I, you know, I'm very lucky to have rings in my living room, but no excuses because do you see this man i bought this thing i want to say over 10 years ago now it cost me like 30 bucks it's just a standard doorway pull-up bar 10 years later i still have it it's got a you know a couple dings a couple uh couple scratches but it's still operational so at the very least i recommend this anyway just for life get a pull-up bar that you can hang in your doorways so you have somewhere to hang from even if you live in an apartment that doesn't allow for it but yeah just spend time and hang grab let your weight pull you down you can hang with your feet still on the floor and that's absolutely fine so you don't have to be all the way and just feel the stretch in your shoulders. Let gravity do the work. If you wanna make it more specific to handstand, what you can do while you hang is you can try to pull your ribs in and that's gonna take the stretch more into whatever's tighter. I feel that a lot actually in the pecs when I do that. So you can, that's an option, but it's only an option. Just hang and just let your body do what it wants to do. You can lift the feet off the floor, you can keep the feet on the floor, you can move around. If you're hanging on a bar, you can do different grips, you can do regular grip, under grip is gonna stretch you a little bit differently, mixed grip, um, eagle, eagle grip is a bit different, whatever you wanna do, but just spend time hanging because there's a lot of benefit. And again, it's one of those things you accumulate a few minutes a day just throughout your daily life and over time, that's gonna have a huge effect on your overall shoulder flexibility. And now one other trick that you can do that's interesting, so is you combine the, the idea of passively hanging to let gravity pull your shoulders up with the active stretch that we did. So for example, if you're one of those people and there's nothing wrong with it, you reach your arms up and you're having trouble getting your arms close together or straightening your elbows or getting them as high as you would like them to, 
because you feel restrictions. So one thing you can do is make sure your feet can touch the ground when you're hanging. Really important for this variation. So we can hang, try to actively reach up like you did in that active stretch, reaching up with the shoulders, putting the feet on the floor, slowly transferring the weight, and then trying to maintain that overhead position that I had when I was hanging after I come off of the bar or the rings. So just a way to play with it, but yeah, definitely keep it simple. Just hang more. It's good for you. Even if you don't do handstands, I still think uh, there's a huge benefit for your shoulders and your grip and so many other things just to spend a bit more time in a hang. Uh, so one specific exercise I like to use with the handstand training is to basically we're using the wall as a reference for what a straight line is and then you can see what kind of active flexibility you have in your shoulders in reference to handstand position. So it's going to look like this. Uh, my feet are about a foot from the wall with a little bit of distance. What I do is flatten my back. My head touches and I'm removing all the space between my back and the wall and that's gonna feel different for everybody because our backs are all shaped differently. So then basically keeping the arms straight, keeping them shoulder width, and then I like to do the eye of the fist upwards, just my preference. We're gonna to try to pull the arms in line with the body without bending the elbows, without going wide, without changing the position of the midsection. So basically this is a good test for you to see what your actual flexibility is in regards to handstand is see how high you can get while maintaining that strict position. So this is a a really good one. I like to use that one a lot. Uh, and then we're going to do just a standard shoulder stretch in the wall. So nothing super fancy about this, but I'm going to reference the cats because I watch how they stretch. And they stretch their shoulders a lot and they do it in two very specific ways. One is to actively reach to grow as long as possible. And the other is as they're in that range to pull down. So we're going to try to incorporate those two ideas in these open shoulder stretches. So one is to reach and grow longer and grow taller and then making sure you have the resistance to pull down. So we're going to have the hands on the wall. We're just basically trying to pull my chest down through the hands. And then if so I, I can do a back stretch, but if I'm trying to be more specific uh, with stretching the shoulders and understanding what's happening there, I want to stay a little bit more rounded in the chest so I can focus just on shoulder opening. So about 45 degrees or so around the chest and then just pull down so I can reach, grow long with the shoulders, apply pressure, pulling down. I can move around a little bit, but here I'm using part of my weight to press the shoulders open, so that's going to be helpful for those of you who are a little bit less flexible. Just kind of pry, pry that joint open but staying strict. So we can give that a go. As I said, this is a pretty standard stretch. So same idea, using a little bit of weight to pry the shoulders open, this time with the window ledge, so we have a bit of a different angle. So putting my hands on the ledge, thinking about pressing my chest down, depending on the height. I can bend the knees a little bit, but basically, same idea. I'm pressing the chest down into the floor. I can do those two uh, cat stretches where I reach. So I'm here. I reach the shoulders and I extend them and then I push down further. I can do a little bit of pulses by pushing down and then lifting up. So I'm just spending time here because as I mentioned previously, we're just using a little bit of force to help pry the shoulders open a little bit further. Then classic stretch on the floor. Uh, I think they call this the child's pose. I'm not really sure. But basically kneeling, so also very cat-like. We're going to reach the arms forward as long as we can. Try to pull the chest down to the floor. The kneeling helps keep the back round. I try not to put my head on the floor because then it kind of releases my shoulders in a way that I don't want to. You can go fingertips for a little bit more range or putting your hands on blocks. But same idea as before, just hang out here, let the weight pull you down. You can do the reach, you can do the pulling and go up and down, side to side. Here's another variation that I like where I roll onto the edge of the palm and I can actually get into the lats a little bit when I do this one, but 
Again, just a, a simple basic stretch, spending time, whether it's in your warm up or just in your daily life. As you do it more, your body is going to adapt better to it. Next stretch, a little bit less obvious because we've been talking about shoulder flexion, getting the shoulders back, but also a lot of people have trouble getting the arms close together because they're used to pulling with their lats and lats are tight. So this stretch won't help everyone, but it is going to help people that have a little bit tighter lats. So I'm going to show you with the stall bars, but you can also do this with just a broomstick which I'll show you afterwards. So grab maybe head height, uh, palm down or on a broomstick I go palm facing away from me and then this is the stretch. So I'm pushing up with the bottom hand as if I'm going to do like a human flag and then I can roll around but the idea is to get more this way. So I'm pushing out with the bottom hand and then pulling and relaxing with the top arms so I can get the arms closer together as well because in the ideal handstand position we want shoulders in line with the back but we also want the arms to be shoulder width so make sure you don't overlook this one. So with a stick the way you can do it is I have palm out and then it's the same idea I just want to make sure that I put weight on the broomstick the whole time. So bottom arm pushes, top arm pulls, keeping weight in the stick play with the angle, I can go lower until I find a good way that hits that whole line. But that's another way that you can do it in case you don't have stall bars or a squat rack or you know anything like a vertical pull that you can use. There's always options. So yeah, don't overlook this stretch because I've seen this a lot of the time when people you sh show their line from the side, the handstand line, like, okay, it looks pretty good. Let's see it from the front. And then, whoa, what was that? So just uh, one more thing to keep in mind. And final idea is to actually stretch the shoulders in the handstand itself. So I use this as a progression for Mexican handstand, but you can also use it just to get more flexible and just to get your shoulders more open. It's a really interesting stretch, again, because it's actually functional. We're actually stretching the shoulders in the position that we want the shoulders to get more flexible in. So if you have hypermobile shoulders, be careful with this one. But if you're naturally stiff and you just need more force to pry your shoulders open, absolutely give it a go. So we're getting into a back to the wall handstand with a bit of distance from the wall. Um, and then the, the idea is we push the chest away from the wall. So we're pushing the chest that way and it pushes the shoulder this way. Try not to do a lot of movement from the back. Try to stay. It's going to be hard to be completely hollow. Just try not to arch too much when you do this one so we can focus on the proper joint. So finding the hands, kick up, find your position and then we're just pushing away like this. So I'm pressing up through the shoulders and at the same time I'm pressing away and then here I can get a nice stretch and it's a way to gradually load my shoulders. And then I find this one to be specifically useful for those who tend to planche a little bit in their handstand, for those who tend to just be overly closed and rely on strength because it teaches you the exact opposite of that. So yeah, go slow with this one. Be careful because it is your full body weight pushing you open. But once you get used to it, this one can be very effective. And play with the distance a little bit. So I'm just going to show you another round, but a little bit further. So when you go further, stretch is going to be more intense. Uh, but always the idea is chest away from the wall. And what you'll feel is that the shoulders go behind the heel of the hands. Or maybe for the first time, you actually get your shoulders vertical. So here, body is tilted. I'm not trying to arch too much. So I'm trying to keep my body straight and just leaning back like this and holding it. And when I do this one, remember, I want to always maintain the lift and the elevation because that's actually more important for this one than it is even for a basic handstand. But yeah, definitely play around with this one. Give it a go. Just as I said, take it slow. Be careful. No sudden moves. Gradually build up to it. 
So as always, I'm not trying to claim this to be the ultimate compendium of shoulder flexibility for handstands. It's just a few ideas that you can try and hopefully some of them help you. Some of them are more obvious, some of them not as much. Remember, it's not only the training that you're gonna get benefit from, but also basic habits that you build in your daily life. And I think that's a really important concept that transcends just the idea of handstands. But yeah, hopefully you get a few ideas to get your shoulders a bit more open. You can get a nice uh, straighter line in your handstand. Not that it's necessary, but it's still a good goal to work towards. Um, so check out my other videos if you're curious about learning more uh, about the handstand. Check out my ebook for the full process of learning to perform a handstand as an adult. I offer online coaching. I offer workshops as well. So um, you can check all of that in the link below. Otherwise, like, share, subscribe, and let me know what else you want to see.